We well, see, I just could not sit down and play that. I had to stand up. So if you're wondering why I'm kind of standing up in my studio, rocking away to that tune, just it just felt wrong sitting down. So it's a dramatic tune. It's an awesome tune. It's nice day for a, for a nice day to learn how to talk. It's a nice day for a resurrection by Necromantics. It's off the Return of the Loving Dead album. That's probably my favorite album of theirs. I kind of like that point where their psychobilly styles kind of became a little bit more contemporary. I really dig that. If you do like that album, I've actually done tutorials on Gargoyles Over Copenhagen, if I'm saying that right, and Haunted Cat House. So go away, have a look. I'll put them in the links below. Now, if you want the transcription, jump on the Patreon or join my website. All right, let's get to work. Don't forget to hit the like button, the hit the bell and subscribe. And if you put a comment, that helps us really well. If you think of something to say or you've got a question, far away okay let's get into the lesson so um the first couple of bars we get this little pattern so okay the song is in the key of b minor and the three notes that we're playing here is just a b minor triad so i use my second finger here on the second fret of the first string i have my third finger ready to hammer onto the third fret of the second string and away i go i hit the second string and i hammer oh <laughs> that was embarrassing doing it again. It's weird when you do things slow, you know, sometimes it just feels really strange. I'm sure you guys understand. Okay, so we pick the open string, we hammer the correct string, which is the second string on the third fret. So it's B, hammer to the D, pick up on the first string. And we just keep repeating that. Now you might say, Adrian, how many times do I do this? But believe me, you don't want to sit there counting. One, two, three, four. What I would recommend you do is try and feel sets of four. See that? Okay. Music is generally moving in sets of four, especially contemporary music like this. Okay. Uh, well, it's alternative contemporary, I guess you could say. So it's so. What I'd like to tell you is that that goes for four bars before it changes. Bar two. Sorry, for two bars before it changes. So that was two bars there. And on the transcription, bar three, what we do is we do almost literally the same thing, but I'm gonna have my first finger to the second fret of the second string. Also for two bars. Then, we go back to the original one, but only for one bar. So that was one bar, or four beats, because each of them, uh, they're in triplets, so one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, for one bar. And then we go up to, by the way, that's bar five on the transcription, we go up to bar six. And we just take the shape and move it up two frets. So I'm still playing open, but I'm hammering the fifth fret, and I'm playing up on the fourth fret. Okay, so... Just like that. Now, in terms of what's happening tonally, we're playing over B minor, so we've got that. And then the bass plays in F sharp. So this is kind of representing an F sharp minor idea. Then it goes back to the B. Now, you would think if we move that up, we're doing a B minor. Um, but it's not. The bass goes to an E. So very clever work by Peter Sandorf, by Necroman. These guys are great musicians. Very smart. Very smart indeed. So I'm hitting the open E there. Back to B. F sharp. Did I say F sharp before? It's an F sharp. Yeah. Okay, so after we go up to here, oh, I'm overcomplicating, I know, but I want you guys to hear that tonality. So, one bar of that, we move it up. One bar of this, back to the B, minor idea. Half a bar, and then the F sharp minor idea. For half a bar. And then we get that. And then the drums come in, and they tick away for a little while. And I've marked it here as in bar 13, coming into bar 14. So we've got... And we get an A5 here. We've moved up the neck a little bit. I'll explain that. We had to grab the chords here before, but uh, we can't really slide in. 
from the A5 to a B5 with the uh, bass note really rolling across. So I moved it up here. And you get that. You hear this note slide if we do it here. We can kind of slide in, but not the same. So I moved it up and we do the power chord on the fifth fret, power chord on the seventh fret, but it's the same B5. Okay. So we get that. And then in bar 17 on beat four, one, two, three, on the four, we play that seven. Not going to matter if you absolutely nail that on that note on that beat. You could play it on the one of bar eighteen. Doesn't really matter. You'll hear it in the song, obviously. So then uh, in bar twenty one, the end of bar twenty one into twenty two, we be begin the next section, which is really cool. <laughs> This was not easy to figure out, nor is it easy to play. Peter Sandorf, I love his playing because he does everything in very neat ideas, and it's always great to learn and great to teach. But he definitely has his own style of navigating the fretboard, um, melodically and probably technically. Those things usually go hand in hand. Um, but I always, yeah, I can, you can just feel uh, a sense of awkwardness in the playing don't hear it. He's an amazing player. I'm not saying at all that uh, he's an awkward player. Just the, the, the way that he plays, I find a little bit um, awkward for me to replicate. So, but yeah, it's just it's always really clever, really cool, and you've you've got to work to nail his ideas. So, what I did here was I I play O to three on the second string, and then I make this triad, this B minor triad. Okay, so it's four, three, two. So it's B, D, and F sharp, just a B minor triad. Okay, and that's the start of 22, and then he repeats this, but in bar 23, we play 4, 3, 1, like that. So, I just stretch my, I just open my first finger up like that. Now, if you're trying to stretch, you're doing it wrong. Open your finger up, see that? I'm straightening it out like that. The other thing you can do, change to your third finger, and then go 4, 3, 1. So, you're going to understand very quickly what I was trying to say before about this stuff being a little tricky and a little awkward to play. You do it like that. I'd probably sooner just open that finger up, okay? So so that's um, bar 23. And then we hammer again. And in bar 24, we do this. Okay, and that was into 24. And that's bar 24. Play the third, second, and first string, and we're playing fourth fret and third fret together, okay? There. So. Okay, and I'm, so, so basically, we've played this note, we've played the first fret, and we've done, done it again, but we're playing open. Then from here, you'll play three and three on the third and second string. You'll play two and two on the third and second string and then four and four on the third and fourth string. Okay. And that's just rounding out the sort of top of a B5. When I first played this on a little uh, YouTube short, I wasn't playing that bottom note, and then I listened later and I went, hang on. I think you might even finger pick them for some reason. It just... It just sounds more correct, but I'm not sure could be overcomplicating and imagining things. I'm, do I do that? So that's uh, everything from 22 to 25, and it just repeats again. And getting off the four and the four and returning to that is quite challenging. We'll go back to the first time around. You gotta go straight in. Yeah, you go straight into the O3 and start again, okay? Very challenging. Good luck. Everything you do that you find really hard, just do it really slow. Make sure you've got it flowing. You, no point spe speeding it up until you can make it flow at a slow speed. Then it will flow at a high speed, okay? Um, so bar 26, 27, 28, 29 is exactly the same as I was just saying. 
So it's really that idea I just showed you twice. And then in bar 30, coming into it, we still finish with the... Um, so we've gone... In bar 20... Oh, 29. And we still do the 03. But then we start this. Ah. Uh, Okay, let me play that really slow. So bar 30, uh, into bar 30. Bar 30 is now. Okay, and then it repeats. Okay, and what's happening there, I've tried to break this down into a sort of a strummable idea. This is very, very close to what's being played, um, but there's always a little bit of gristle that's going on, okay? But what I've done here is this. So we're playing four, three, two, and it's really the right hand that's doing some cool stuff here. So we've come into it. Okay, so hit the third and second string together, uh, and the first string, hit them all. Then we just hit the third and second string down, then up on the first and second. Up again on those two strings. And finish down on the third and second. Okay, so. So you want to get that rhythm. Then we stretch the first finger back, same as before, and then do the exact same thing. Okay, so that was bar 35. Bar 36, we lift the finger, we do two down strokes. And then we do this little, so that's two, three, two, oh, and then four and four on the middle two strings. And start again. Okay, and it's just twice through. So that's that little passage there. And now we go on to the next part at bar 38. Coming into it, so from 37 where you hit the... Do this, go up with a dead strike where you relax your fingers and just whack the strings. You're going to think I'm crazy. What am I talking about? But watch this. Okay, so it's just a little expression. You just sort of hit the strings as you change up because the next bit's going up to this B5 chord. Up, down, and start. The next section. So start the next section. Okay, that's... A really fine detail. I wouldn't panic about it. You don't need to nail that little detail, but it's just if you hear the little bits and pieces that are going on with these players, those little things that characterize their playing, I feel like that's kind of cool. All right, so I want to get through this quickly before my camera uh, divides up the file. It's very frustrating when it does that. So what I'm going to do, uh, we're going to go through this bit. So it's uh, you've come off the... Okay, so it's just a B5 power chord, you hit it twice, and then go up, down, on the 7 and 7 on the 3rd and, and 2nd string, like that, so, then you bend the 9 and the 9, and you'll actually bend the 9 a little harder than the 2nd, but you do need to bend both, this ends up being a tone bend, this ends up being a half bend, so it's there, and this one's bending to there. Don't overthink it, just grab it, bend them both, it'll come out somewhere in the vicinity of what you need to do. Okay, and then we let it down and pull them both off. And then we play the seventh fret on the fourth string, so. Okay. That's tricky, that. Flatten the finger just before you pop the two fingers off, so flatten your first finger on the sevens. have to pick anything until we get to there. So that just keeps repeating, it's just the chord that changes. So we go to the G5, that was the G5, and then we go to E5. So it's 022, G5 was 355. So G5, E5, and then this last bit here which will conclude the tutorial. 
So, I notice a lot of the time you don't have to play the full power chord with three strings. You can often do it with two and it sounds fine. Till the last two there. So, if you're ever having trouble getting both notes, just use the uh, use your pinky and play that fret two frets higher, you know, than the first finger. Just use the pinky instead of the third and ditch that note. I tend to play that extra note. Sounds a bit fatter. But a lot of guys don't, you know, and a lot of times it sounds like they are doing more than they are, but they're just literally doing those two notes because it sounds amazing. So that's that last bit goes. So we're sliding from the F sharp five to the G five. So you play the F sharp five slider, which by the way, this is in bar 44. So we're sli hitting the F sharp slide, then go up down. Sorry, just do it down. Yeah, just do it down. Like that. Down, slide, down. And do it again. Like that. I wasn't sure if he was doing a little bit more, but let's keep it simple. Slide up, strum, do it again. Then we hit the G5 one more time. Go back, hit an F sharp five. Then you slide up to the fifth fret, but lift your third finger and play Fret 5, fret 5, fret 7. Okay, we're actually playing a D5 power chord with an extra A in the bass. So it's actually... But we flatten that across and get the... So that's your D5 slash A, technically. And an E5 slash B. Okay, so 5, 5, 7, 7, 7, 9. And then we finish on the B5. So that... So I just finished editing this video that you've just finished watching, uh, but I forgot to actually put the file from the camera onto my laptop where I do my editing and the camera is not here at home with me, it's at the studio. So apologies for that, but thank you for working through that lesson. I hope you really enjoyed it. Part two will be on my website or on Patreon. So if you want to learn the next part of it, you will have to jump over to those, but I'm sure if you've spent all that time with me learning this, you'll see the value um, and of course, check out the other tutorials on my YouTube channel. Thanks to all my Patreons, all my supporters. Hope you're really enjoying my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.